Welcome to the Deadly Addictions channel. Today I'm going to be talking about Marvel's What If, Episode 6. So this one is called What If Killmonger Rescued Tony Stark. Again, I am really loving the animation, the movement, the momentum, the traits that they're using that they're carrying over from episode to episode is knocking it out of the park for me. But as I explained in some of my other What If um, weekly podcast reviews, stories don't interest me. And it's weird because I was never a fan of the Marvel Zombies and I liked the Marvel Zombies episode. This one didn't interest me. But, again, I think this is the trend with these. It's what if. It's going to be using characters we don't see much. Might be stories I'm not into. Or not, you know, don't hit home for me. And I think this is a case of that. Uh, as I said, the animation, the voice acting, the music, the sound effects, it all works on a great level. It's just really, really top-notch stuff. Um, but I'm going to give a little bit of spoilers and plot stuff as I go through it. And there's a warning now for that. I don't do it much, but with these weekly things, it's just so quick. I don't like silly things and, oh, uh, let me rephrase that. I don't mind silly things if it's done in the right environment, the right context. But it's, it's, it's like... Let me bring up uh, James Bond. Back in the day when I grew up with James Bond, all he had to do was karate chop somebody in the shoulder, and he went out. And that was good for what? Um, till Roger Moore, I guess when Roger Moore ended, it got a little different. Was trying to up the game a little bit, make it a little more real. And when you get to Pierce Bronson, and then obviously now... Um, it, it's more realistic. It's more, um, you know, uh, real life scenario type stuff with the born identity. You know, I mean, it's still a little bit outrageous in the sense that people can do these things, but okay, comic book world, I get it. So, as I'm not so interested in the story, it just doesn't feel like a what if to me in the genuine sense. So, Tony Stark from his movie. They take portions and they use this. They do it well, really well. Uh, and the pacing and editing storyline is pretty good. I just don't, I'm not interested too much. So he's on his uh, tour in Vietnam where he gets uh, the shrapnel in his chest, but Killmonger saves him instead. So that's the what if. So he never becomes Iron Man. He doesn't sit out on the pet. It doesn't change him so much. But he develops a friendship with Killmonger, and there are um, hints and things about Killmonger's ultimate motives, but Tony doesn't see it, and it's done well in that sense. Uh, and then there's little things that start to happen, and Killmonger is convincing him to do this. They make this drone, it's like a Gungan anime, and if they make a joke about it, which is what was cool. And Here's one of the parts I'm talking about. Uh, the most recent thing was watching, I think, Game of Thrones. Um, the last episode that ended everything. Um, Clegane, the mountain and the hound. And they're doing the sword fights. And then the mountain decides to throw him like seven times. And I, I, I just I lose it. I just don't care. I'm, you lost me. So here, they make the drone. They do things. There are little plot things I'm not going to give away. But uh, Tony Stark eventually confronts Killmonger and kind of realizes, you know what, you can't, you can't fool Jarvis to a certain extent. We, I know what you did. And he uses the robot that um, Killmonger was designing when he was younger, the Gungan-type prototype drone, and he's got it fully functional, and he sends it, and they're in the same room. This is the same research lab R&D type thing, uh, mechanics room. And Tony Stark sets the 
but after him, Killmonger. Now, at this point, Killmonger is just a highly trained regular person. I'll put him up there with Black Widow, Hawkeye, in the sense that, yeah, they can do comic book crazy things, and that's fine. However, if you don't write it smart, if you don't do the proper things in my mind, you lose me, and it's such great animation and stuff that I just was like rolling my eyes. So, the robot grabs him. All right, the fight's over. He's dead. Tony Stark, I'm going to reveal something. He knows that is a murderer, and he murdered James Rhodes and uh, Black Panther. Uh, and it's just a great moment of, um, you know, Tony Stark, he's not Iron Man, who uses this kind of creation of Killmongers to kill him, to get revenge or avenge him. So he grabs him, and then the robot throws him. All right, so that's the first thing. All right, I'm done. You want your, this guy murdered your best friend. You know he's been deceiving you. All this stuff. You, the robot throws him. Now, he explains to Killmonger that the robot has been programmed by him. He knows all his moves. And then Killmonger's like, oh, I got to improvise. All right. A fight happens. And then Killmonger's hit and slams into the wall by this huge Gungan robot drone. And again, he's dead. He should be dead. But no, he's got to get up, do his fancy stuff. You know, uh, still equated to, uh, I love, I actually like the Black Widow movie. I'll do a, a podcast on that. Um, Black Widow, Hawkeye, you know, the Avengers or people in the world that are just top class, special trained people. And I'll give them that. And then he's got to go and, and disable it. And, you know, uses a vibranium spear type thing. All right. I didn't, I just dropped out of the episode. I I don't care because write it a little smarter. If you're going to make Killmonger this really savvy, um, although uh, weird ideology, he seems to be pretty smart in how he's planted things with Claw, you know. And they, they portrayed in the movie. And I'm not a big fan of the Black Panther movie either. but. I think this show should have been more about Shuri and Pepper Potts. That would have been a great, um, but they hinted that at the end, so maybe that's their purpose. But anyway, I don't, you know, you got him savvy, you got Killmonger smart. Why, as soon as he's not grabbed, a discharge EMP comes off his belt? An electrical current uh, a strike comes from a, a piece of equipment he has on him, and it disables the bot. You want an action scene. You want to make it real. He's not Black Panther yet. He's not Captain America. He's not Thor. Uh, you've got a trained bot, elite, trained, knows all his moves. He, when he grabs him, the fight is over, in my opinion. This is not a field test type thing. Tony Stark knows he murdered his best friend. They're murdered people, and he's been betrayed. The robot throws him. Fine. They get into a fight, and then the robot slams Killmonger, goes into the wall. And and uh, I just I don't care about these things. Now I am going through some shit. Got a family emergency type thing. And I'm trying to be unbiased and I meditate and I do my shit. And I'm hoping that they're not in you know affecting my judgment on things. But I think I've been pretty cool. Like I'm watching the movies and um you know I was surprised that I really like Black Widow and it was eh, Suicide Squad and Shang Chi? I'm not gonna. I have to think on that a little bit more. And the episodes that I thought I'd hate, like uh, the Marvel Zombies. I can't, you know, I'm fucking sick of zombies, and I didn't like the Marvel Zombies to begin with. No, I enjoyed that episode. Now, I don't want to see. Uh, that's what I mean by like some silly shit. I think you should just write a little better. Uh, you wanted an action scene like that, make it after he EMPs him. When he gets, if he's going to hit him and get slammed into the wall, make it that he has a weaker or a prototype vibranium suit. Because it's not until the end when they do the what if, where he's conning the Wakandians, that they give him the potion, the flower power, and he's a Black Panther. And, okay, so then he's got the enhanced strength, and I, I get it. 
I just, I don't know. Maybe it is, you know, the things I'm going through and the, you know, the environment I'm in and things that are going on that are impacting me. I, mean, I hope not. I mean, I hope I, you know, but I will be honest in that sense. Maybe I'll come back and revisit these and have a different view if things are in a different light or, you know, situations change. But I, I want to stress that I, I think these are good. Like, uh, I'm liking the animation. There's so much to love about these episodes. And there are parts of this I really liked. I really got into Pepper Potts and Happy and Suri, uh, you know, uh, Black Panther's sister, who they're finding out what's going on. And it's pretty interesting in that sense. And it's not done shitty. It's not uh, badly edited or badly voice acted. And um, no, it's just this isn't the story I want to see. But if you want me to get it, you really want me to be wowed by it. Just write it a little smarter. I get why you're doing certain things, but I'd rather see it done a little smarter. You got um, big drone thing, you know. But again, I, I am equating it to that um, James Bond type thing because now we know, like, we know what mixed martial arts, the MMA, and UFC stuff has shown us, right? We we know that these other types of things that are great, like karate, kung fu. Great for discipline and, um, you know, learning about things and your body and that balance between, uh, you know, exercise and mental health. I love. But we know it kind of works now. We know what you need to do to be able to fight and do things. And I think as exaggerated as Black Widow is, they, they kind of do it right. Now, granted, if you fall from the sky and you're running on the side of skyscrapers and stuff, okay, yeah, I'm going to roll my eyes and. But if everything around it starts to make sense and fit in, I get it, I can go along with it. I think this misses the mark on that. I wanted to see, um, you know, a little more groundness in this guy who you're portraying as real savvy. Now, he, like, he is, you know, voice acting is great and stuff. And there are elements that I do enjoy. Like I said, I like seeing uh, Shuri come and get into the picture. The, the betrayal of the Wakandans, but they don't know it, and I'm fine with that. Maybe just not the story for me, but if you're going to add an element like that that annoys me, that uh, pulls me out of my uh, immersion into the story, I'm going to remark on it, and it just really pulls me out for some reason. And like I said, yes, it could be, you know, just what I'm going through right now and what's going on, and just you know, life shit getting to you and you don't notice that these little things wouldn't bother you on certain things. So I'll say again, episode six of What If, What If Killmonger Rescued Tony Stark? I give it high marks on almost everything. Not my type of story. And I get annoyed, real nitpick about uh, the, that, that fight scene with the robot or the drone, whatever we're going to call it. Because everything else is working so well. And there was a, one of the other episodes where I, I, I enjoyed it. It wasn't for me, but I could see the potential of people liking it. And just not giving a shit. And same with this. I would not be surprised if I'm in a minority. Um, well, there's not really no minority. I just It's not for me. It's not my type of story I want to see on a what if. I'd rather have a little more grander things. But then again, one of my favorite ones is... The first one with Sharon Carter becoming, you know, Captain UK or whatever. But I don't know. It's just maybe that element just rubbed me the wrong way. It could be also. I'm not the biggest fan of Black Panther movie. My favorite portrayal of Black Panther is not even in his own movie. Although superb actors. I love the actors. You know, I, I just really want to make that clear. This is not actor's fault type thing. This is just not a story that I'm into. Uh, in my brain, what if Killmonger Rescue Tony Stark doesn't go the way this did, and that's another problem on my part. So again, I think this is so well done. I don't think this is going to be an issue for people, but for me it is. It's just little nitpicks that maybe because what I'm going through is exasperating or making things seem more um, you know, negative than they are, but holy shit, just watching this is beautiful, 
I really loved how they carried the same, like I said, I don't even know if it's the same animation department from episode to episode, but it seems like <clears throat> it is, or they are making an effort to keep it grounded in a certain look and feel, a little bit of cell shading, and like I said, in a lot of these podcasts, the sound, the weight of things feels good and really looks superb. And that's going to be really where you catch people. I mean, like I said, this is what if. It's going to be twist on a bunch of things that I am not may not be interested in some of them. And I think they know that. And I think, you know, a company like this has enough money that they're not interested in, you know, if, if 80% of the people didn't like episode 3 or 4, they're going to tell their story. They're going to put it out there. They're going to have something that will be done and in the can. And I do think they're going to, overarch connect things eventually and i would talk more with my friend about it but i think they're going to come back and stop putting things together and this episode might be more important because of this and we just don't see it now so i'll give it that also look um i'm a big fan of comic books and uh anime and cartoons i'm just a nerd uh um to the extreme in that case i want to love every episode but i don't want to see dumb shit and i get a little pulled out of the episode however it doesn't lower the marks in the sense of how much effort is put into it sound again voice everything's just so good and it, it's not even like i watched it and came away like ugh, and like no it was just like okay um i'm admiring it for certain things but there's little things that just get to me and irk me and I think that'll be about it. Um, <clears throat> I look forward to more. None of these have really put me off to the next one. Um, so when I discuss things, I say, like, this episode might not be for me. It's more like, hey, you know what? I'm interested in this more type of story. Uh, or characters that I'm not interested in the movies could be impacting me. I didn't kind of, I didn't like what they did with Killmonger in the movies. Although I love the actor and his, his portrayal. I don't. I think it was a well-made movie, and in the end, with the weird, you know, animation things they tried to do, it was a little too much. But I love the, you know, the bare bones and the foundation of it. <clears throat> so I didn't come away from Black Panther like the movie not liking it. But it's not my favorite. It's not the one that I look to to watch all the time, and maybe that's another part of this too. Uh, I'll be honest and. We don't know sometimes what is shaping our beliefs and um, decisions we make and what I'm convinced of of the episode. And people are probably just going to roll their eyes at me right now saying, how the fuck are you upset about a robot grabbing the guy and then punching him later and he goes into the wall? But he could, I, you know, I get it. So if someone might watch this and love it from beginning to end. I would not be surprised. I would not um challenge their judgment where there are things where i will debate you in a sense and say no this suck all right zack snyder's justice league cut sucks it's garbage like that like i would actually try to argue my point i'm not going to argue my point here this is a superbly made it's visually stunning voice sound it's just can't say enough about it every episode some stories just get me more than others. The story might have got me a little bit more if I didn't get a little fucking annoyed. But I think in the long run, I am still excited about the series, about the whole premise. So I am still on board. I'm still gung ho. I wish everybody the best and take care of those you love. I'll see you all next time. Bye-bye.